It's not about having these large computers. It's about having many small computers and many small artificial intelligence systems. And to do that, we're going to need a much larger workforce. Aaron Barciaga, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Matt. So we're going to talk all AI. You know, November 30th of last year, of course, sort of our lives changed. And that's when ChatGPT sort of <laughs> became yeah. a part of our lives. Yeah. And suddenly AI became something I think that we all became a bit more aware of. You've been tasked with doing something really important and pioneering, and that's actually developing the first associate's degree in AI at Miami-Dade College, which of course is the biggest campus-based college in the country. And you're in the middle of doing that right now. Let's start with the basics of well, why is this important? No, let's, yeah, I, I, want, I want to highlight yeah, something you please. said earlier. You said, uh, you know, there was a seminal moment where yeah. ChatGPT came into our lives. And I, I, love, I love that you said that because a lot of folks weren't really appreciating the artificial intelligence opportunity that we had. I was looking at some of my presentations even recently where I was saying back in 2012, what is artificial intelligence? Kind of defining right. it for the generals that I was talking to. Because it was a term back then, but not used in 2012 up until like how it is today in 2023. With that being said, I think we're at a moment like the personal computer. Mm. Previously, some of the folks that had developed the first computer said, you know, I think that we'll need maybe five computers worldwide to handle all the computations that we have. I think you might have five computing systems on your person right now. Right, exactly. Right. And so we've reached that inflection point where artificial intelligence is going to go from being this generally used system to something that's used on an individual, personal, and a daily level. And as we do more and more of that, it's not about having these large computers, it's about having many small computers and many small artificial intelligence systems. And to do that, we're going to need a much larger workforce. So to your point, why Miami, why Miami Dade, and why now? As we grow this workforce, the workforce doesn't mean we need more PhDs and we need more masters. We actually need more of a, what I would call a blue collar workforce. Folks that do the data engineering. An AI blue collar workforce. An yeah. AI, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I call it blue collar AI. Uh -huh. So a workforce that's going to be able to do well enough the data engineering, the data operations, the data pipelines, the application development, some of those things that sometimes when you have a PhD or master's uh, educated individual do, they're kind of fighting below their weight class. These folks can come in at a much uh, more affordable and efficient salary and grow into the roles and actually then pin on future degrees as they get work experience. So this new curriculum that you're putting together will be launched this fall, Yes. fall of 23 at MDC. Right. Walk us through it. Well, it's absolutely thrilling and I hope you and I hope everybody who's watching us takes the time to visit one of the two or both artificial intelligence centers that Miami Dade has built. They're really uh, extraordinary. I've been to colleges, I've been to MIT, I've been to uh, Northwestern. I've seen the artificial intelligence centers they have and what Miami Dade has created is just as good, if not better, than some, some of those programs have. So really wonderful, wonderful workspace and education spaces you all have right here in Miami. Miami Dade's uh, college's approach to artificial intelligence isn't just gonna be teaching them general AI theory. There's been a bumper crop of data science and analytics and artificial intelligence programs that I don't know if they're really worth their salt. Mm. Sometimes these programs have just been math courses and computer programming courses rebranded and repackaged and then labeled artificial intelligence wow. yeah. by professors mm. and academics. What Miami Dade has done is with a business industry leadership team, so engaging industry professionals like myself, we have worked with folks from Best Buy, from McDonald's, from IBM, from Intel, from all over all industries to ask what is it that our students really need to know to come in and not just do the coursework because it's convenient for us, but the coursework that we need to develop so that they can graduate for into the roles jobs will be going that they need. Yeah. And one of the things that we're doing is not only will the students graduate with their associates, a two-year degree in applied artificial intelligence, but they will have the opportunity as well to pin on several certificates. Certificates that are particularly relevant to Miami and to you know, the whole nation, but particularly to Miami, things like travel and hospitality, financial services or FinTech, supply chain, and life sciences and health. So the skills you're teaching, how will those be applied? Well, there's so much about just the passenger and the customer expectations. One of the things I really reinforce is we live in an era of Netflix and Amazon, same day delivery and next day delivery, and these recommender systems that come to us that seem to know what we want better than what we think we want, right? Yeah. 
And so that kind of expectation, that customer experience, people say, why am I getting that today at Amazon and at Netflix and at Disney Plus or others, but I'm not getting at name your cruise line or name your, uh, uh, name your hotel chain. Mm -hmm. And so really bringing those recommender systems, bringing that customer journey and expectation experience and optimization for how these cruise lines are staffed out or how these, uh, how these hotels really price their rooms for seasonality and major events, those are the opportunities we have to help with things like dynamic pricing, uh, infrastructure optimization, and the like. Wow. Now, talk about sort of how pioneering this effort is at MDC around building this Associates in AI. Uh, it's extremely uh, pioneering. Uh, there are two other associate programs in the nation today, mm. and there are many other colleges that are trying to catch up and really borrow with the uh, kindness of Miami-Dade to show the way. Uh, what's the playbook for developing a, additional associate programs? And so I think Miami-Dade is encouraging these, uh, these colleges to do the same. But how special is it? Very, because uh, unlike some of the other programs, the two other programs that exist, this is not a program that's been built by academics or built by a company in particular, hoping just to graduate students into their workforce or into their pipeline. Sure. This is company agnostic, industry agnostic, and really developed for a cross-industry application of these critical skills and techniques. So what can we do? We can repurpose those folks to do higher thinking math higher thinking solutioning, while we have other folks with associate degrees, a blue collar AI workforce, coming in to do those most critical, really what is 80% of the problem, the data operations, the data pipeline, the data engineering, the application development, and then allow that higher order thinking be something that they grow into as they gain industry experience. So I think it's a wonderful pathway to go from associates to bachelors, bachelors to masters, masters for those who desire it, PhD, and this is always the on-ramp we've needed across every profession. And finally, I feel like we're starting to get it in AI. So, you know, it's, it's interesting how, I mean, so often with, you know, with uh, software development, for example, um, we've seen these different boot camps and different programs that have come along saying, hey, you know what? We can teach people competitive skills and software development that employers will value and hire people for uh, in upwardly mobile jobs. We can do that pretty quickly. Right, in some cases, you know, less than a year and, and several yeah, the, months. The eight week course. So right? All that type right. of stuff. The insight that you're sharing here is, is that actually with AI, there's an element of that. In this case, sort of the two year associates program can get you sort of in the door and build a career in artificial intelligence. I've, is that right? Don't I've I had an that? opportunity to hire thousands of individuals from yeah. my time at Accenture to Booz Allen to AWS at ECS thousands of individuals, and I can tell you, I have never, ever hired an individual because, oh, they had that boot camp. Right. I've never looked for the boot camp. Now, those boot camps are great ways to dip your toe, but they are by no means enough to qualify yourself on a resume, CV, or anything else to actually have a crack at meaningful data and solutioning. And so a program like an associate's is more than a toe. You know, it's getting up to the calf or the thigh. Wow. That gets a person wow. ready to but get it, I guess the, 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 the it is, you can do it fairly quickly. It's not as though you need to, to you know, go get a master's degree to have a career in, uh, in artificial intelligence. Well, I think, you know, you we, think have to, we have yeah. to understand that there's a spectrum mm. of artificial intelligence. Okay. Yep. Oftentimes, folks like me, and I have a degree in operations research, and most people listening don't even know what that is, and <laughs> I'm not asking you to go research it. But operations research is really, you know, where a lot of like the Turing test even began, yeah. you know, many decades ago. And so there's operations research, there's data science, there's analytics, there's machine learning, there's automation, and then there's artificial intelligence. And so I really use that artificial intelligence as like an umbrella term for what really happens underneath the hood and bringing all of that data together to understand a decision that needs to be made and then automating that with human feedback. Got it, wow. Now, you've written also about ethics in AI. Yeah. And building in ethics right. and so now as you're building a curriculum around teaching AI to our next generation of workers in the space how should we think about how do we build in yeah. ethics in 2018 uh, some of my good friends in the community and I kind of put together a manifesto and we called for there to be no less than an annual summit 
on ethics and artificial intelligence, and that was in 2018. Mm. Unfortunately, I think um, you know uh, a lot has gotten behind us. Uh, sure. We haven't been able to stay on top of how fast this train is truly moving. Yeah. It is flying, and uh, and the need for us to stay on top of this is critical now. Uh, thinking about ethical AI, or as I prefer to call it, responsible AI, uh, isn't about what you and I think independently, or it's not a case-by-case -case basis. There is a need for a framework that we install and we understand universally that breaks down the most critical components of artificial intelligence. I've looked at many frameworks. There's some that uh, talk about responsible AI in terms of three degrees, some in terms of 16, 20, and seven. And I've, we've created a, a model called the Unified Responsible Artificial Intelligence Model that talks about it in terms of accountability, impartiality, resiliency, transparency, security, and governance. And so when you start to think about responsible AI in those six dimensions, you can define it a whole lot more than just, is it good or does it provide data privacy? Is there someone at the end of the day accountable? Is it truly being governed? Is it transparent and understandable? So I think that's uh, where we have a long way to go not just in industry, but as a nation, to start putting some framework, some licensure, some certification around what is now become a critical component and driver to day-to-day -day life. And are these things that you're gonna be building into the curriculum as well? Yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, part of the certification, when the students graduate, they'll have an opportunity to become an Associate Certified Analyst Professional, which is the certification we have worldwide for data science and artificial intelligence. Uh, as they begin their associate's journey, they'll be, have an opportunity to become a full certified analyst professional after a certain amount of tenure and then pass in an exam. So kind of like a journeyman program. They'll get exposed to all of that education, what it means to have responsible artificial intelligence, and really be part of a credo as to how and why we develop responsible AI systems and what is the end-to-end -end process for doing that. Importantly, the documentation and the accountability. So what does success look like with this program? Uh, we're working with the National Science Foundation right now and, and helping to develop a model that can be shared you know, nationally. And I'm just gonna be extremely thrilled for Miami-Dade to be taking the stage and talking about not only how they did it well in 2023 with graduates in 2025, but as well as how they helped the rest of the nation start to scale up the workforce that we need so we can beat that number that I talked about earlier, 2030. Let's think, you know, try to transport ourselves 2030, 2040. What, as we think about that future, one, what are the things that concern you about the directions that AI can take us in? But then let's close, close on a positive note and share with us how you think AI can make our lives so much better in the future. I think about this a lot. And uh, there are certainly a lot of uh, great authors and, and thought leaders that I like to listen to and learn from and, and contemplating this issue as well. And so I'm not going to talk about Terminator machines or a lot of the other <laughs> sensationalistic right. things that people like right. to talk about. But I will say is both the opportunity and concern that I have are three things. Our first, robots. Second, cobots. And the third is just data. So let me work back. As AI expands, it means that there's going to be more and more data both used as well as collected. And so how do we safeguard, how do we secure, how do we ensure that it's being used for the appropriate uh, uses and not maliciously is going to be critical. Secondly, cobots. Cobots are robots that do work in concert with humans. So how do we start to build and craft and understand those systems so that there's both human safety as well as human efficiency when and where these cobots are being used. And then robots, yes, how those robots start to replace humans in some menial tasks, but then we get creative and allow those humans to go do other kinds of work. A lot of times people say, you know what, in 2040, 40, there will be no more name occupation. I think, you know, the um, stageman was probably really concerned when cars came onto the roads. <laughs> Does that mean there's a lot of unemployed stagemen? Right. Still today? No. Right. They became mechanics. So working my way back up from where I said, there will be new jobs and opportunities for humans to do uh, both the manufacturing and the maintenance and the supervision of these robots, of these cobots, and ensuring proper protocols for the data. I mean, really what this is doing in so many ways is democratizing AI education. 
Is that a fair way to think about it? I, and I, I like that you said that third word or the yeah. fourth word. A lot of times people say democratizing artificial intelligence. I like how you said democratizing artificial intelligence education because it will always be how humans understand and develop and apply artificial intelligence. It's not just us ceding the playground to the robots to do it for us. Right. There will always be a human in the loop, hopefully, ensuring that these robots <laughs> drive us towards the happiness, the prosperity, and the security that we need. Aaron Barciaga, thank you. Thanks again. Go Miami. Go Miami. <laughs>